This is Steve once again from the Life and Sad Ending channel. Today we're going to take a very special look at the life and career of Curly Howard. Jerome Lester Horwitz was born in 1903 in Brooklyn, New York to Jewish Lithuanian parents. Jerome was the youngest of the five Horwitz brothers and because of that they used to call him Babe. The name Babe stuck with him all his life. He was a quiet child who was an average student. Babe was a good athlete and played on the school basketball team. He didn't graduate from high school but kept himself busy with odd jobs. He was also an accomplished ballroom dancer and singer and regularly visited the Triangle Ballroom in Brooklyn. Curly was interested in show business and would watch his brothers Moe and Shemp perform as stooges in Ted Healy's vaudeville act. Curly was quite the ladies man. He was married four times and had two children. Curly started out in show business being sort of a musical comedy conductor for the Orville Knapp Band in 1928. Though Curly enjoyed the gig, he watched his older brothers Moe and Shemp and partner Larry Fine make it big as some of Ted Healy's stooges. Vaudeville star Ted Healy had a very popular stage act in which he would try to tell jokes or sing only to have the Stooges wander on the stage and interrupt or heckle him. Shemp, however, disliked Healy's bad temper and heavy drinking. In 1932, Shemp was offered a contract at the Vitaphone Studios in Brooklyn and left the group. With Shemp gone, Moe suggested that Babe fill the role of the third Stooge, but Healy didn't like Babe's look, complaining that he didn't look funny. When he shaved his head, Healy quipped, Boy, don't you look girly. Mo misheard the joke as Curly. His stage name naturally became then Curly. In 1934, Healy left the group to pursue a solo movie career. They renamed the act The Three Stooges. That same year, they signed on with Columbia Pictures. The Stooges soon became the most popular short subject performers in the history of film, turning themselves into comedy legends over the many years. By 1944, Curly's energy began to wane. He checked himself into the hospital in early 1945 and was diagnosed with extreme high blood pressure, a retinal hemorrhage, and obesity. His health forced him to rest and he lost a considerable amount of weight. Halfwit's holiday would be Curly's final appearance as an official member of the Stooges. During filming in May of 1946, Curly suffered a severe stroke while sitting in director Jules White's chair waiting to film the last scene of the day. When Curly was called by the assistant director to take the stage, he did not answer. Mo went looking for his brother, and he found Curly with his head dropped to his chest. Mo later recalled that his mouth was distorted and he was unable to speak, only cry. Curly was rushed to the hospital, where Mo joined him after the filming. Curly spent several weeks in the hospital before returning home. After Curly's stroke, Shemp agreed to replace him in the Columbia shorts, but only until his brother was well enough to rejoin the act. Curly partially recovered and with his hair regrown, made a brief cameo appearance as a train passenger barking in his sleep, hold that line in 1947, and it was the only film that featured Larry Fine and all three Howard brothers, Moe, Shemp, and Curly at the same time. Still not fully recovered from his stroke, Curly met Valerie Newman and married her on July 31, 1947. Although his health continued to decline after their marriage, Valerie gave birth to a daughter, Janie, in 1948. In the post-stroke days, Curly enjoyed playing gin rummy and watching the minor league baseball team, the Hollywood Stars. He and Valerie had a swimming pool installed at their home so Curly could use it for physical therapy. A dog lover, he enjoyed playing with his pets, a collie named Lady and two other pups named Salty and Shorty. Later that year, Curly suffered another stroke, which left him partially paralyzed. He was using a wheelchair by 1950 and fed boiled rice and apples as part of his diet to reduce his weight and blood pressure. Valerie admitted him into the Motion Picture Country Home and Hospital in August of 1950. He was released after several months of treatment and medical tests. In February 1951, he was placed in a nursing home, where he suffered yet another stroke a month later. In April, he went to live at the North Hollywood Hospital and Sanitarium. In December, the North Hollywood Hospital and Sanitarium supervisor called and advised the Howard family that Curly was becoming a problem for the nursing staff at the facility because of his mental deterioration. They admitted they could no longer care for him and suggested he be placed in a mental hospital. 
Mo refused and relocated him to the Baldy View Sanitarium in San Gabriel, California. In January of 1952, Mo was contacted on the Columbia set to help move Curly for what would be the last time. Sadly, just 11 days later, on January 18th, Curly died. He was only 48 years old. He was given a Jewish funeral and laid to rest at Home of Peace Cemetery in East Los Angeles. Time is our most precious commodity, and I'd like to thank you for spending a few minutes watching my video. And I'll see you again, unless I come to my own sad ending.